to see everybody. Beautiful day. Spring is here in Maine. And I am glad to be here with to talk with you about my next book. Um, the my fifth book. It is called Stroke and Aphasia Recovery Metaphors Help Us Mend. And it's turns out to be a very interesting set of thoughts about this. It is about metaphors. Um, but it's also about how the brain really does work, because as you get better uh, from the time you had your stroke and aphasia, lost your language, and begin to understand, without really understanding any of it, that along the way, all these activities are doing what they need to do to what they say in, 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 uh, include and in, in induce um, plasticity. And plasticity happens to be this particular uh, facility we have in our body and in our brain to grow new brain matter. I mean, that's really the, the beginning, middle, and end of all of this. That's not to say that there aren't a lot of other much more uh, terrible, uh, severe uh, damage from the stroke and where it is and how it works. But uh, at the beginning and end of that is the fact that in the with the stroke comes the loss of brain matter. You have lost a lots and lots of cells, hundreds of millions of cells lost from the stroke. If you happen to have this particular kind of uh, language disorder called aphasia, um, then you can get better. Again, all depends on severity and motivation and practice. But given all of those kinds of things, to the degree that you've lost all those cells, and they're never going to come back. The interesting thing is that the remaining cells have that ca capacity to grow new dendrites and synapses, which are really metaphorically the branches and leaves of photosynthesis, which is the most wonderful um, metaphor we can possibly have where photosynthesis uh, converts light um, uh, into green leaves and sugar. and Plasticity converts thought and cognitive activities into new brain matter. That's, that's how it works. So the intervening step between having lost it and getting it back is the activities themselves in the middle that as a result of those activities, they induce more of that particular uh, set of uh, proteins um, that grow new brain matter. And that really is how we learned from the beginning, because uh, once the cells are there, then you have to grow more of these highly tangled uh, uh, nerves and their appendages, the, the, uh, the uh, dendrites, and you have to grow more and more and more of those as you get older and as you learn, uh, as you learn something new. Um, and it is just the way the brain works. When you start to think about these things, you start to grow these things. Um, so after your stroke and aphasia, um, and as you begin to understand what's happening to you and inside of you, um, and using my work up till now, including the metaphorical book, um, then you begin to better understand if I do these particular kinds of things and I do them in a particular way, then they will do more in terms of growing more of those dendrites and synapses. So everybody knows what a metaphor is. Um, and clearly it's a figure of speech that provides hidden similarities between one thing and another, often quite different kinds of things. And in this particular case, uh, these hidden similarities is the fact that you have, you have a damaged brain, yet that damaged brain still has the ability to tell you I say tell you, it doesn't really tell you, but you can actually feel some of it. It tells you that if you do these other kinds of things, um, then you will help you get better by inducing plasticity and as a result, the, the uh, uh, resulting uh, 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 learning. So um, when you look at my work here with these 15 chapters, and nobody has ever told you if you had a stroke and aphasia, a lot of times you won't actually be told that if you do these things, you're going to get better. Um, they don't tell you the underlying um, uh, processes uh, that that is what, how it happens. They won't necessarily tell you that. Nobody ever told me that either. Um, 
Although I think that people think that if you do these things, like when you go to school, if you do these things, if you read a book, if you think about it, if you write notes down, uh, you, you take a test and you do better at that test, then theoretically, clear your learning. Um, but nobody tells you what's really happening on the inside um, about what you are, quote, learning from when you're in school before your stroke. After your stroke, nobody's going to tell you the same thing, that if you do these things and you do it more repetitively, you do it more consistency, more regularly, whether it be reading, writing, speaking, and other kinds of cognitive activities, they're not going to tell you that if you do these things and do more or less, you will get more or less learning. Now telling you that, quote, learning is really is what is happening when you do those activities because of the way the brain works in plasticity, it converts all of those activities into new brain matter. And then, yes, you do learn something, but you don't learn it by accident. You only learn it by virtue of what you have been doing. So if you don't, quote, do those things, obviously, um, before your stroke, if you don't really like math or science or history or English, well, you're not going to know much about them. That means you haven't learned those things. The same thing happens on after the stroke. If you haven't made a conscious decision, more motivated to do more reading, more writing, more speaking, as bad as it might be, the fact that you are doing those things creates this environment where the brain says, oh, we can see the information coming in. It is making me, the brain on the inside, it doesn't have to do it it's on its own. It is making this based on the activities themselves and growing more of those dendrites um, going forward. Um, but since most of the time you're not going to be told this if you're a stroke and aphasia person and you really don't know about this thing called plasticity until you find my books, um, you're not going to know what plasticity really is. Although you're going to hear people talk about it as if they know when they say, oh, yeah, plasticity. Sure, you just do those things and out it comes. At the highest level, you can say, sure, that's the way it works. But you actually have to educate people so they can better understand why it's so important to do um, uh, these sets of activities repetitively um, so that if you understand that, then like homework, um, rather than just dealing with your, your uh, uh, therapeutic sessions, and I had two a week um, for 15 weeks, two a week, 50, four, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, that's an hour. And you do one on Tuesday, one on Thursday. And, and doing those activities, you have to be thinking about it, uh, considering what's happening, and you're going to get somewhat of a burst of plasticity at that moment in time. But when that goes away, and you have several more days to the next one, clearly, unless you have been told, Tom, do this every day, not just these two times in the week, but every day, every night, and as much energy as you have to do it more regularly every day and continue to build the momentum that the plasticity needs to grow more and then more and then more. If you don't do that, you grow more, but without all that additional time to work on it, it dies down again. That is the way the brain works. You need to build up and sustain that momentum going forward, getting to your next class, as it were, your next session. But when that's done, either you continue to do it on your own building or you won't. And as interesting as all of this is, when you get down to this book as a good example, if you don't come to understand the metaphor that lets you understand, whether it be the momentum, the repetitive component of it, um, the, uh, and the, the, the metaphor that lets you see that even with the, as I say, the stumps of a, of, a, of a tree that's been cut down, and you begin to say, okay, so I lost all those cells. I'm never going to grow, grow back. What does this mean that the remaining cells? Well, the remaining cells are the stump. They are still healthy and they will continue to grow more branches and leaves, more dendrites and synapses based on what they are um, going forward, the remaining cells. 
uh, had that cap capacity. So the um, this is why it is so important to find somebody like me who got lucky enough to have had my stroke, aphasia, and got better along the way for all kinds of accidental reasons that allowed me then to start to realize that I had a mission uh, to do, and that is to write it down, to express it when I couldn't express it before, for other people who might not have the same uh, lucky uh, uh, experiment that I went through that I can now tell you earlier in that process, given that you're not going to hear it from anybody else. And that's not to say there aren't other anybody else, but you still won't get it the way I have done it. So you can hear me talk about it. You can see it in my books. You can begin to understand, even with the images I provide you, even before you can see those words or express those words, you can look at those images and go, oh, this is what's happening on the inside. And the more I can consider that, and think about that, then the more activity will be happening on the inside and all that time it's inducing, again, plasticity, that is everything in the middle, and that moves to the resultant learning that comes. And in my particular case, and in yours as well, the resultant learning is that you can say more today than yesterday. You can write more today, more properly today than yesterday. You can speak more today than yesterday. And whether it takes, excuse me, whether you don't really can't consider how much time does it make to go from here to here to here. Um, the interesting thing is that regardless of how much time it will do moving from one to two to three, as long as you do number two, as long as you do those activities and you do, do them regularly. Um, and then you continue to induce plasticity and as a result, the resultant learning. And again, in my case and many other people um, have gotten better based on those activities. And using my metaphors helps you better understand it earlier in your process than you otherwise would because you will never really know, you'll never be told, how important it is to understand how the brain works and how it really does rewire itself because that is what it does. But you have to be more aware of those rules for you so you're more aware that if you do those things, yes, you will get better based on what you've now been told. <sighs> there just aren't that many books are available, especially books that are small, books that have the images uh, of what you're looking at. And as a result, so that people like you and I can look at those images and see that and say, oh, knitting in the brain. Oh, um, this kind of machine that duplicates everything you're writing on the outside, clearly engraving it on the inside. So all these metaphors are what you need going forward. Thank you very much for seeing you again today. Um, it is April. Um, uh, May is stroke month. June is aphasia month, aphasia awareness month. So I'll be looking forward to seeing more of you. I have a couple of articles I have to get out. So I think I'll have another one in two more weeks. Uh, but all of this is sort of building up to understanding not only what I have been doing uh, for these last seven years with Stroke Educator, but uh, uh, starting with Aphasia Nation and sharing with more people with not just people with aphasia, but others in the uh, aphasia world, as well as the, the others outside who don't know anything. And it turns out that the millions of people with aphasia happen to be the best teachers you can possibly have to help teach the other hundreds of millions of people who will never mo know about how aphasia works and how plasticity works unless we help them. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Thank you very much. Have a good week and I will see you soon. Nice to see you guys. Check it out. It's in Amazon. Started last week. All right. Take care of yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.